If you're building Flutterflow apps, sooner or later you're going to cross an issue where you're going to need to search rather than filter your database tables. That is what we're talking about in this video. So uh, this one is a two-part problem. Essentially, we need to send a search term to Superbase and receive a response. And then the second part of the problem is displaying that response in our Flutterflow app. Now, uh, I'll do it in two parts. It's first part, the research, the send the request and getting the response is is pretty easy using our old friend remote procedure call which if you've watched any other videos it's one I use all the time the second part a little bit of work involved a bit of head scratching but once you know what to do it's actually not that complicated but if you don't know what you're doing you, you could get pretty lost trying to figure it out so we'll start with the sending the um, request to Superbase so we have got on our blank auth project which is, is sort of I'm using so we've got a search search box and a search button on on the home page so if we go into those on here so text field which is search box and then the search button and all we're doing with the search button is passing the parameter the search term which we are taking from the text field search to our page search results so it's just a link to the next page that passes the search term across now obviously you could just put the search box on this page i just decided to do it by passing parameter for reasons which um are for a future project so right so that brings us to here now what we're doing on this page is we have got on page load we've got a custom action called search table so I'll go to the custom action code in a second and what we're doing we are passing our search term into our argument called search so we're our import argument for the custom action is called search and we're passing in search term which is the parameter of the page that we've just passed and we are returning a variable called search result that is what we're receiving back from our custom custom action so the custom action itself essentially um, as usual again as you if you've seen a few of those we've got a, a super base remote procedure call now I'm going to do a video if you're not familiar with these in particular I'm going to do a video specifically on these um, but essentially what we're doing we are calling a super base SQL function to do the search for us we don't actually do it from from Flutterflow itself. The function we're calling in Superbase is called search table. The parameter we're passing in is called search, which is our parameter here. And the parameter that we're passing it to within the search table function in Superbase is p underscore search underscore term. And then we are returning a JSON. So that's the Flutterflow side of it to essentially send and receive back your 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 search term. So if we go over to Superbase, the search table function in so in database functions search table. This is where uh, your your functions sit. That's the table. That's the function we're calling from our Flutterflow app. We're passing in the p search term, which is a text type, and we turn JSON. So just go back over there again so we're passing in search to search term we're calling search table and we re and we're returning a JSON okay so going to edit function and then we've got the code down here which I will actually show you the code itself from the SQL editor because it's actually just easy to see it on the screen so so basically the create or replace function what that does it creates or replaces the function that we have just looked at in the database function section it won't replace it if you try and change things like the input arguments if you try and change like the types so I've changed that to integer it won't change that it, it, it will just it says it could give you an error so you have to go and delete the old function first so however what this one does 
it searches down until we we, we well we declare in a, uh, a our return variable is result underscore json and then we search down until we find a non null row and into result underscore json we are adding the company salary role city and country from the job search table where our search term is included within the text within the the text within the uh, the column so for instance we've got some there that are south london if we're searching for london then they will come up we've got i think there's north carolina so if we're searching carolina or north it'd come up or there's several manager ones so if you search the term manager there's production manager software manager or just manager whatever they'd come in so it's kind of a slightly broader than just an exact match search and it's not case sensitive so what that does it, it does its thing and returns our json back to flutterflow so if i go quickly to the table editor and then these are clearly all fabricated i've just made a few few sort of rows in the table just so we've got some information that we can match so you can see how it works so don't be applying for any of these jobs because I made them all up. Although if anybody wants a 140k a year job in sort of San Francisco, it sounds good to me. So, right, if we go back over to Flutterflow, what I'll do, I will quickly demonstrate it working and then we'll look at how we display the results that you're seeing. So, as I said, research from manager, we're going to get a few options come up and we're pulling the information from this column and then all those jobs come up if you're searching you say you want a salary of 75k what you'll get anything with 75k in the salary column will come up and those are there say you wanted for instance a job in the USA not case sensitive as you'll notice anything in the USA will come up pulled from that that column there so let's go back and what will happen is let's say you want to work in Italy and let's face it why wouldn't you it's a wonderful place it comes back blank uh, because there are no jobs with Italy anywhere in the in the table so that's how it works now again if you're going to do this for for you know for, for any kind of purposes in the demonstration you'd put some conditional text to show when it was blank return a blank table that's obviously no use to anybody put some conditional text that says you know no results return try another term or whatever so that's how it functions and as you can see it works absolutely terrifically let's just try one more we put in london just so we get some data on the screen works absolutely terrifically it's pulling there for instance from the city and the locale uh, I'll use local rather than state because not everybody has a state. Obviously, we have counties, so that's why I use local in in that column. But in, yeah, it's just just a word. So it works brilliantly. And um, displaying this, I've done a data table. Now, this particular type of information, I think, it actually work really well with the data grid because you could sort of have a little card for each of the each of the roles. Uh, you could also use a list view or whatever, but uh, but just for ease, I used a data table. So let's see how I'm extracting the info from the JSON and displaying it inside this table. Right, so this part is, say so it's not difficult, but it's a bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing because the documentation does have some information on how to extract the info from a JSON and display it, but I thought it was slightly lacking. I thought we could have done with a bit more of an explanation. However, using that, and how far it did get me that's how i managed to work it out i hadn't done this before it's like i say it's not particularly complicated but if you just try and do it without having a clue what you're doing you you will get stuck and, and you probably get a bit frustrated so slightly convoluted possibly but it's it's not overly difficult so let's let's start so the first thing you're going to need is a custom data type so I've called it JSON response and I actually realized when looking at this, I've called too many things JSON response. So bear with me. Um, but we've got company, salary, role, city, country and locale. Those are the um, that is the schema, the, the, the different data types within our custom data type. All strings and they will match 
exactly, and this is critical, that they match exactly your database database column information. So what happens is we're mapping the JSON response to, as in the JSON response from Superbase to our custom data type called JSON response. And that's essentially how this is done. So if I go to, I'll pick on these obviously done all exactly the same way. So I'll just pick on company as the example. So if we go in here and see how we've done it. So, sorry, I've missed a step. Data table. So we need to give the data table its information so it can create its its dynamic children. In this instance, we're not using a backend query. That's blank. We are generating children from a list. So the variable we're given the list is search list because it kind of makes sense. It's a it's the list of a bunch of searches, and the value is search result. Now, if you remember correctly, if we go back to the page and the custom action, search result is the output variable name we've given to the custom action. So therefore, our returned information, our returned JSON from Superbase is called search result. And it is that well, value we are using to create the dynamic children, i.e. that's where we're going to pull our information from. And our variable name for this is called search list. Right, so if we go into the company, and um, it says it there, so we have got an item in search list, and we are mapping it to a data type. And the data type we are mapping it to is JSON response, as I've just been through, it's called JSON response with the different fields. And then in this option, you need the data structure field option. And then we come down, and the field we want to map it to is company and then default variable none in this instance you have to do that it's otherwise you get an error in this instance it doesn't really do much apart from stops and error you'll probably get a an identified null error or whatever it's called um an expected null error if you don't do anything in there so you have to do it anyway because otherwise it gives you an error so anyway so essentially what we're doing we are mapping the company so in our json response we have got a field called company a key called company and in our data type we have got a field called company and that's what we're mapping together so that's how you do it so that's why they have to be the same because it maps type to type and this is what it states one thing it does state pretty clearly in documentation is that your super, your database table columns must match your custom data type um, names for this to work so yeah, so that's how we do it. That's how we map them. And then it'll be the same if we pick salary. It's exactly the same thing. We're using an item in the search list, which is what we've used to generate the children, i.e. the list. This, these are all the, the list, if you like, the different lines. We map them to data type. The data we're choosing is JSON response, using the data structure field. And we are mapping salary, basically. So actually, we're, we're matching salary with salaries. Essentially, that's what that's doing. So that's how you do this. Like I say, it isn't particularly complicated however there are a couple of things certainly in terms of this side of it that are a bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing i had to work it out it's actually easy and i'm glad i did because it, um, it's actually not particularly difficult to do and i shall use this i use this endlessly now because it's, it's a brilliant way of getting information out of the database so a couple of caveats i guess um in terms of the database size now we are currently searching the entire table for matching terms on a huge database obviously you probably don't want to do that from speed and efficiency point of view actually use this exact search sort of procedure for a project management app that you use daily it's got probably 20 25 columns and six seven rows that grows all the time and it works very fast just as quick as what we've just seen on those little demonstrations so at some point you're going to get beyond that and you're going to want to just certain map just particular columns or whatever so uh, that is something maybe to think about now, as usual any code you've seen on the screen you will be able to go to the link down below copy and paste it and using your own apps so if you're looking to be able to search a database table rather than just filter it this is one way of doing it 
I'm sure it's not the only way of doing it, but it's certainly one that works for me and it's worked brilliantly well. So hopefully that helps. Any questions you have, please put them in the comments and I will answer them as best I can. So thanks for that and uh, I'll speak to you next time.